Hi everyone, it's Neil Grant from Granty Art here. How are you doing? In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an eye. Um, I'm going to use probably about a three quarter thick lump of clay here as my uh, base. I'm going to use an unfolded uh, paper clip as one of my tools. That's my loop tool. I'm going to use a popsicle stick as my sort of spreading and creating planes tool. In addition to my hotel key card and my paintbrush with a little bit of water. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to make a base for my uh, eye to go on. Now, if you see my other tutorials, you'll see this is how I commonly start. The main difference here is I made it a bit thicker. And the reason I've made it a bit thicker is so that I can go backward a little bit on the outside here just to give myself a bit of depth to the eye socket. So I'm just using the hotel key card just to press the clay down onto the board. When you look at it from underneath, can you see how I've gone in and I've curved it? And that's kind of to imitate the curve of the face. So face curves from sort of the nose here, backward obviously toward the ear. And the reason that's important uh, to make that particular shape on this demo is that we've got to talk about peripheral vision. So uh, peripheral vision, your eyes don't sit on just a flat plane like a board. They actually wrap around and cut backward as um, they go towards the outside of the eye. And the reason they do this is to give you peripheral vision. Um, without peripheral vision, um, your ancestors would have been gobbled by saber-toothed tigers that leapt out of the bushes at them. So very important to get that in there. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of clay. I'm just going to roll a sausage. Lengthen it a little bit. I'm going to make a little L. I'm going to turn it upside down. And just put it onto my piece here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just making the nose and the brow for me to put an eye socket into here. So if you can just imagine the eye, the eye is going to go and sit in here somewhere like this. I just need to make a, a bony bucket for it to go in effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm pressing on my L. I'm making it into roughly the shape of a nose and into a brow. Now, I put a tutorial up about how to make the nose, so I'm not going to go to, into this in any detail. This is just a, a very token nose to allow us to form some structure around the eye. So I'm going to press. So I've made a plane here to represent um, the underside of the brow. Here's the brow itself. I'm going to take my thumb and I'm just going to push it in a little bit here just to start to make an eye socket. Now I'm pressing it a little bit harder on the outside than I am the inside just to reflect the fact that the eyeball sort of goes backward as it moves towards the outside of the face. So a little bit more pressure here. Okay, I'm just using my fingers, no tools yet. I'm just sort of forming up a bit of a socket for me to put an eye into. I'm going to take a little bit more clay. I've got this little, little area here where the third eye goes. This is an area of bone called the glabella before we get into the nasal bone. Nasal bone would be down here somewhere, going into the cartilage of the nose. Take a little bit of clay. I'm going to make it into a little bit of a sort of smile shape there. I'm just going to place this on to give me some structure to the bottom of the eye socket. 
I'm going to press that on, blend it into the nose, pull it down here. What I've really done is just created a bit of area for the eye to go into. So again, I'm just pulling my index finger along, creating planes. So this is a flat surface here, another flat surface here. I'm just starting, bring around just to close up this eye socket a bit so your eye, your eyeball doesn't fall out the side of your face. Always a, uh, a good thing to prevent. So I'm just going to blend that on with my finger. So what you can see we've done is we've created an eye socket for the eye to go into. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is put in what we call the lacrimal gland. Now, the lacrimal gland is basically the gland that makes tears in your eyes. I'm going to do this by just making effectively a teardrop. And I'm then going to rotate onto its side and place it into the eye like this, into that eye socket. So can you see, I've placed it in there. And what we find with this whole sort of upper area, so we haven't even got to the eye yet. This is just the gland that sits above it. And what we find is we, we get a convexity moving to a concavity. So if you can see here, we are convex here, going over the gland, but then as we go in towards the center of the eye, we become concave. So we've created that, that little area there. Now the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to make an eyeball. And I'm going to do that by essentially making almost a sort of olive shape of clay. So can you see that? Made a sort of, almost a hemisphere of clay there. A nice little flat bottom so it sits into the eye socket here. I'm going to place this in. Now, this gives the impression of the eyeball. So I'm not going to make a full eyeball because that's, that's just a tedious process for us as a sculptor and we don't need to do it. Um, we're really concerned with the superficial elements here. The fact that there's an eyeball that's about an inch across and goes back into the socket is interesting to know, but from a practical perspective, I just need to represent the bit of that that is visible on the surface. So I've placed that bit of clay in there to represent that eyeball. I'm just pressing it down in there using my popsicle stick. Now, there are better tools for doing this. So you can get curved bits of wood or there's something called an eye tool that's made by PCF Studios that's quite good for this. But from our perspective, because we're, we're doing this with everyday available things at home, this is a pretty good substitute. So if you can see what I've done, is I've placed the eyeball in there and you can see the lacrimal gland there standing out proud of it. There's the eyeball. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an eyelid. I'm going to do that just by taking a small amount of clay, rolling it between my fingers, starting to create just a little sausage like that. I'm going to test fit it. So I'm going to sort of pop it in there and say, okay, how does that look? Yeah, not bad, not bad. I'm going to bring this round into the corner there. So one of the rules for the eye is this inner corner here is generally speaking lower than the outer corner here. Not always true for everybody, but a, a pretty reasonable general rule. So always make sure 
that inner corner when you're starting particularly if you're you're making a sort of uh, just an example piece try and follow that rule so I've placed it in and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it in with my popsicle stick You see how that's that's starting to develop. Now, obviously, the depth or the depth of this uh, upper eyelid is kind of very much dependent on what the person is doing with their eye. So, you know, if I'm slightly slightly sleepy, it might be all the way down here. If I'm wide awake and I've just been surprised, so you can see the the white above my iris or the sclera as it's known, this eyelid is going to be fully open. I'm just going to push it up a little bit, just to give me a, a relatively sort of open eyeball. I'm not going to worry about smoothing it at this stage. That's a job for a paintbrush afterwards. But what you can see is I'm, I'm just doing this sort of little planes here. And what you normally find is the eye, so this is the inner corner of the eye, the sort of peak of this upper eyelid is probably about a third of the way across. So I move from the inside towards the outside. It comes across sort of flattish and drops back down. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and cut the iris and pupil in. I'm going to do it in this way just because I'm using the um, paper clip. And this avoids me snagging up the lower eyelid. So I'll just pop this in now. Now, in terms of um, making this piece, I'm just going in. Again, it's ragged at the moment. I've bent the paper clip, so I've got a little loop tool there. Just popping it in here. What you normally find is that the top of this iris and pupil disappears under the inner lid and it's pretty variable on the lower lid some people um, the iris is visible just above some people it just ducks under the uh, lower eyelid it's quite variable and uh, obviously it varies between expressions as well so I'm just cutting in I'm gonna you, know, you can tidy this up a little, you know, the end of your paintbrush, you can make it a little bit rounder. We'll do all that in a little minute. Don't get too hung up on precision um, at the moment. We can tidy all of this afterwards. The next thing I'm going to do is just take another little sausage of clay and put it in here to represent the lower eyelid. Now the right, lower eyelid is generally much straighter than the upper eyelid. So can you see how I'm just sort of doing a test fitting right now? I'm just popping that in there, probably a little bit thick. So I'm just going to take it off, just thin it a little bit toward the end here. And I'm going to pop it in. So. I'm going to have it so the edge of the iris just sits on the lower eyelid. Now the lower eyelid, this is another rule for the, uh, the eye, is so the lower eyelid here just tucks in under the upper eyelid. So I'm going to tuck it in under, bring this down a little bit. Push this on here. Now, see how I'm using this just to make this little sort of spreader motion. I'm pushing down and just spreading down onto the lower bit of the face, just as I create this eyelid. And I'm just going to press it nice and flat, like that, using the edge of my popsicle stick. Again, don't worry too much about sort of roughness at this stage. Just want to have the right structures in roughly the right places. So if I turn this sideways now, 
what I'm checking for is I'm checking for a sort of stacking order here, which is this lacrimal gland should be further out than this upper eyelid, should be further out than the eyeball. And then the lower lid is further in than the upper eyelid, generally speaking. You have to ignore my absence of a fully formed nose here. Not very happy with this little area here at the moment. See, I've got a straight band for uh, the eyelid going in. So I'm just going to extend the material a little bit on the lacrimal gland here to bring this to a sort of ending at a point almost. So I'm just going to take a little bit of clay. I'm going to pop it into the corner here. Like that. I'm just going to shape it a little bit with this tool. What I'm doing is I'm bringing the corner of the eye in here, bringing the lacrimal gland up to meet it. I'm just going to flatten out. We had all those sharp planes. I'm just going to start to flatten a few of them, make them look a little bit more organic now. Again, don't worry about sort of rough marks. Um, some sculptors leave all of their marks on their uh, piece, and you know, that's the uh, the hand of the creator visible. I like to smooth mine out generally, but at this stage, I'm not worried about them being too rough. So I'm just going to make sure that little eyelid is tucked in under. So let's see if we've rectified the problem a bit there. Yeah, that's much better. So got my little eyelid going in. Got my, um, yeah, a little bit more time. We'd extend this brow out perhaps a little bit further. Make it a bit more, a bit more realistic. Now there are whole sort of set of things we could say about, you know, how the cornea shapes the upper eyelid, depending on what direction you're looking in. I think those are probably things for a slightly more advanced class than this sort of basic tutorial. I just want to help you get the, the right sort of structures in the right sort of places at this stage. So what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to take the end of my popsicle stick. I'm just going to open up this corner just slightly. just to represent where uh, the inner corner of the eye goes. So you can see I've got a little sort of slot in there. I'm going to use this just to, just to sort of clean out the eyeball a little bit as well. We're at the stage now where I can sort of begin to clean it a little bit, make it a bit neat and tidier. The next thing I'm going to do is normally have a little pad of fat just under the eye here. Um, you know, as you get older, that that can break up and become, you know, multiple little islands in uh, in the sea. Um, on some people, it's barely, barely noticeable. You know, as we age, or you know, you don't get a good night's sleep, and uh, life begins to take its toll on us. You know, this this becomes more pronounced. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little shape like this, almost like a sort of, I don't know what that looks like, a little little bird maybe. So a little beak at one end and his little tail at the other. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to fit that. You can sort of test fit these things underneath. So obviously that would be an extreme sort of, uh, sort of pad under there. You know, we might associate that with somebody who's had a, a long and eventful life. Um, I'm going to make it a bit more subtle. I'm just going to pop it in there. Then I'm going to use my uh, loopy tool to reduce the volume of clay a little bit. You generally sort of find this is this is almost opposites with uh, the shape of the upper eyelid. So if the upper eyelid kind of peaks about a third of the way along, this kind of peaks about a third of the way along in the opposite direction. So the peak is kind of around that sort of area there. So I'm just going to start to smooth that down a bit, bring it into the corner there a little bit. Now, that roughly is an eye. 
What I'm now going to do is I'm going to smooth all of this out using a bit of water and a paintbrush. You can see how all the sort of little chips and little bits of paint, little bits of paint, little bits of clay sort of get blended in and begin to disappear. You don't want to use the brush too much to sculpt, but you know, I can see a little bit of shadow in there I shouldn't have because I've not quite joined an edge. I'm going to smooth out this lacrimal gland now. I'm going to do the same on the bottom eyelid. I'm just going to sort of start to blend some of these surfaces together. Start to smooth this eyeball in a bit, bring it into this corner. Start to make the edge of this a little neater. You can see how the sort of the eye is starting to come together here. I'm just going to bring that outside corner down a little bit as I brush it. I might pop this up just a little bit more as I do as well. Just going through a little clean up process. Um, what I find with the eye is um, you know, don't get it too too mushy. It's often easier to clean it clean it up once it's set up for a bit. So I normally make the general eye structure, leave it for twenty or thirty minutes, just so the clay stiffened up a bit and it's not uh, not quite so all over the place. But you can begin to see now. There's our sort of general sort of eye structure and shape in there. Okay, what we can do, and it's a little sort of, some people like this, some people hate it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, is you can put a little highlight into the eye as well. And that little highlight, just to, it doesn't exist in real life. It's just to try and give the impression of reflected light. So I make a little, little sort of super small sausage of clay there. You see that? Oh, I've dropped it. There we are. I can just sort of pop that into the corner of the eye there. Push it across. And sometimes, you know, depending on how well you do this, I haven't done it particularly well there, to be honest with you, because the bottom bit of it is showing. You begin to get a bit of, from a distance, it looks like a little sort of highlight in the eye. So what I would normally do is let this set up for a little bit, let this dry, come back to it, maybe refine it a couple more times just to get, you know, everything smooth. Um, here's one I was playing around with earlier. So you can see there, it's dried up a bit more now. So I've got that little highlight in there. You can see the little pad beneath the eye. You can see the sort of stacking order, you can see the you know, the upper eyelid is out further than the lower eyelid. And then the sort of brow is out further still. But there you go. That's how we do an eye. Um, what I would normally do is then go back afterwards. And um, on this particular example, I'm just going to cut off the nose and all this superfluous sort of information here. Let's get rid of that. Save my clay. All I need is the eye. Um, And I might call that a day. So if you like this video, um, subscribe to the channel. And you can go to my website as well, which uh, is www.grantyart.com or granty-art.com. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks then. Bye-bye.